it's yeah, it's an introduction to summer. It's going to be a whirlwind look at summer swaddling, um, summer sleeping bags, and just kind of summer sleep in general. And today I have two special guests with me, Andrina and Maria, and actually three special guests, <laughs> and baby Theo. So these lovely ladies you might recognise from our sleep support groups. Um, Andrina and Maria are our two sleep coaches. So maybe you guys would like to introduce yourselves sure, okay. a little bit more than I just have. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Hi, I'm Andrina. <laughs> so I, I work um, behind the scenes um, a lot on the sleep groups, and I'm also answering questions. Um, I'm a sleep consultant and a midwife, and Maria's also in the groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm also a sleep consultant. I'm not a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually an IT project manager, which is a little bit different. So yeah. <laughs> Um, and this is Theo, and he is my number three. Yeah. yeah. And um, under this apron here, you'll detect that baby number three is about to arrive in your house as well. <laughs> Very soon. You do. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so Andrina will actually be having some time off to have baby number three, and so Maria will be be in charge. And we've also got um, three lovely moderators who are really helping us out on our sleep groups as well. Yeah. So, um, oh my goodness, there's so much lovely stuff. This is like so our much. beautiful store that we have now in the corner of our office, which is very exciting. <laughs> These ladies give away quite a lot in the sleep support groups too. So if you're not a member in the um, support groups, I suggest you go and join the age relevant one and Andrina gives away rash amounts yes. of stuff. Actually, I tell you. <laughs> so, right. I know, I feel too generous. And so we have to hand over the responsibilities to Maria. You'll be the chief giver away. No problem. Good. Okay, so we're going to do things a bit differently this time. Um, so we're going to just announce the competitions now and then we're going to draw them at the end rather than like giving away lots of things through the through the live. So when you see something that you like, you can just say, I want to win this and just keep commenting all through the live with what things you want to win and then Amelia will pick some winners at the end. I think we'll give away maybe two sleeping bags and two swaddles. Is that kind of what Sounds perfect, and I'll select people at random. Like that. So four chances to win, and then I'm sure over the weekend we'll have some other giveaways on the main page. And I think, oh, haven't we got one to win two wool babes at the moment? Uh, yes. Or did you draw that already? I think it ends today. Okay, so yep. go now and win the, not now, after. <laughs> win the two wool babes. Yeah. Stay here. Should we start with talking about overheating and swaddling, because they kind of go together. So... It's been a lot of chatter about swaddling and yes. whether swaddling's safe and should we swaddle, can it cause overheating? What's your take on that, ladies? Well, Lady number one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I know there's been a lot of talk about swaddling and if it's still recommended and whatnot. And yeah. the reading that I've done, I've really done a lot of digging into it. I yeah. can't find any actual evidence to say that swaddling isn't safe and we shouldn't yeah. do it for these reasons. So yeah. I'm sort of like, we know that swaddling helps babies sleep. Yeah. Um, we know that it emulates the womb environment, which they need. Like if you go back to the five S's, you know, it's yep. that swaddling. Yeah, yep. Dr. Harvey yep. Carp. It How works. Safe. We know it works. <laughs> yes. Dr. Carp, we all love them. <laughs> yep. um, so personally, I'm still going to swaddle. I think, you know, I'm having a summer baby. I will still be yep. swaddling over summer, just making sure that, you know, like it, um, if everyone knows that swaddling is a layer, so we're not going to, you yep. know, put baby in clothes and then swaddles and then, and then blankets, blankets over top, and everything it's too else. much, um, yep. so swaddling is a layer, but yeah, I, I, as long as you do it safely and, and yep. know what you're doing, I think swaddling is one of the best ways to help your baby sleep. Yeah. yeah, and I think we shouldn't underestimate too the benefit that swaddling has for us as parents, um, you know, swaddling helps our baby sleep on their back, which is essential for, for, safe, safe for safe sleep. You know, if babies sleep on their back, they will actually fall asleep. And it's been shown that, you know, babies who aren't swaddled are much more likely to sleep on their tummy, which is clearly much riskier. You know, the SIDS rate in New Zealand only really started to go down, um, you know, after Ed Mitchell's work and all the research that went into that back is best. Yep. And so if swaddling helps your baby sleep better on their back, you know, then why would we not do that? Yep. Um, it helps us get... Uh, have more peace of mind and it helps our babies be safer. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah, there's also the issue about the hips and yeah. swaddling. Maria, what's your take on hips and swaddling? I think again, as long as you're doing it safely and you and you can, you know, move baby's legs like a <laughs> like a frog, <laughs> like, this. like this or like this. Yeah. Then that so loose, eh? Yeah, yeah. Loose. loose is the main thing around the hips. They need to be able to get them into natural a natural position. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it's absolutely fine. It's again not shown to. Well, this is a fancy swaddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not shown to have have had any effect as long as it's done properly. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing is you and I were talking the other day about swaddling being a sort of a tool in the parental toolbox and you don't really start with many tools, you don't get a lot <laughs> yeah. before you have a baby, yeah. they sort of hand you the baby at the hospital and a couple of hours later they go, fine, and you go, <laughs> yeah. okay, I guess I'm going home, I'm not sure what to do. Yeah. Um, but as well as helping them sleep, it just it can reduce crying and fussiness and that's yeah. better for everybody in the family, you know, yeah. it's mm -hmm. better for the household <laughs> in yeah. general to have a it is. less and screaming. You know, when we know, but what we know Know about Dr. Cup's five S's um, and calming, colicky, or unsettled babies. The swaddling is the foundation that makes all the other settling techniques work. Yeah. Swaddling itself won't necessarily stop your baby crying, but any rocking or any shushing or any of that works a million times better if your baby is swaddled and you kind of have the the foundation to help calm them and get them to sleep and stay asleep a little bit longer. Yeah. It's also, swaddling's also been shown to reduce um, shaken baby syndrome because crying is what leads babies to be shaken. Yeah. So, yeah, why would you want to take that away? So yeah, we're really, um, we're really confused about this message that some antenatal groups and um, that some, one D DHB in particular, is telling people to not swaddle. There's, as Maria and Andrina have both said, we've, we've all looked into it, we've all read the research, there's no evidence that swaddling is dangerous. There's no evidence that it causes an increase in SIDS. Um, the things we need to look at is make sure the swaddles are loose around your baby's hips, that they're not tight over their chest. So, you know, this is loose, this is stretchy, this is stretchy. You know, we don't want to crush your baby's chest, but I've never actually personally seen a swaddle that could do that. So I'm not sure where that is. It's quite hard to get a swaddle yeah, from anyway. Very, yeah. <laughs> that time. About 90% 90, 90 of our swaddles are really stretchy. Muslin's the only product. Swaddles we sell that um, aren't stretchy, and you're always doing it on an angle where there is a little bit of diagonal yeah. stretch, mm. and you really seriously can't get it that tight. Um, and then the hip issue, and you know, we only sell ergonomic hip-friendly swaddles. But anyway, and then there's the overheating. So let's circle right back round to the overheating. So that's where you started with the safety. Yes. So things to take, to, um, We've got a really long article about overheating, which Amelia will share with you. And so the key things to do with um, swaddling and overheating really relate to all aspects of safe sleep and overheating, don't they? So should we just kind of go through some of the, some of the ways that you can make sure your baby doesn't overheat, particularly in summer? And I will just start with my personal, um, what's the word? I can't think. <laughs> agenda, <laughs> loathing, of hats. Oh, yeah, yeah. So hats and sleep, never ever hats and sleep, but particularly in summer. So even if your baby looks really just adorable and insta-friendly, insta-perfect, wearing a bonnet, no for sleep. <laughs> and 100% doubly no in summer. So no hats for me. You, what's your next one? Well, my, my pet peeve thing yeah. is... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a pet peeve now. Yeah. <laughs> um, or a top tip. Yeah, yeah my top tip yeah. is um, natural fibres. So yeah. cottons and merinos, like yeah. polyesters or polar fleeces are just absolute no-nos like all year round, but they just don't breathe. So in summer yeah. you want to think about, you know, cottons and merinos that are going to allow your baby to um, regulate their temperature and not overheat. And if they are hot, then they'll be able to sweat and the fabric yeah. just wicks it away. So like that's what naturally is supposed to happen to cool them down anyway so yeah, yeah natural fibers well. yeah and that applies to whether you're swaddling or in a sleeping yes, bag yes. or even with big kids yeah. you know big kids still need to have you know cotton cotton sheets they need if they're having a duvet in it choose you know wool wool cotton or tensile not polyester yeah yeah. yeah. Okay, top tip. Top tip. Uh, avoiding top tip. overheating. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with your little one um, to well, stop them getting too hot? The best advice I was given about temperature was they're on the side of too cool rather than too warm. Yeah. Because a cool baby will tell you that they're cool, but a hot baby might not be able to because they might just be too hot. 
Um, so I tend to err on the side of less layers and when it's really, really warm. Um, and I just, you know, you get pretty good at checking the temperature. So you can check the temperature by like this, yeah, yeah. or down the um, back of their, the top of their back. Yep. And if they're um, not too sort of hot and sweaty, <laughs> then they're probably fine. Yeah. Um, or their hands and their feet. It's fine for their hands and their feet to be cool as yep. well. They don't need to be really, really warm. Um, so yeah, that was the best advice I think yep. I was getting. Yeah, was err on that side yep. a little bit too. Too, too cold. cold. Yeah. You know, and I find myself at this time, you know, bedtimes, um, often in our bedroom, it's actually quite cool. Like, I always have the window open, yeah. um, and you kind of get into bed and hunker down under the bed, yeah. and you go, oh, it's a bit chilly tonight. But I still seldom would get up and shut the window because mm. you do, all humans sleep better a little cooler. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And I think the kind of, um, making sure that your baby's not red and sweaty. You know, obvious, your baby is obviously hot you'll see it. Yeah. They'll they'll be distressed and crying or they will have fallen like into a you know kind of lethargic, deep, leth yeah. lethargic miserable sleep. state. Yeah. But before they get to that, red, sweaty, grizzling, unhappy baby is clearly mm -hmm. overheated um, and you need to get some fluid into them and get some layers off. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, read for, for more about overheating, just read the website article that Amelia's shared. Um, and if you have questions about um, swaddling and safety and should you, shouldn't you, hips, chest, overheating, all of that, we have a, the most comprehensive article you'll find anywhere on the website, I'm sure, about swaddling safety is on our website because we are really focused on making sure that all of our advice is safe and, you know, this kind of confusion for parents is really unhelpful um, and we, you know, we are asking for clarification of why such nonsense advice would be given <laughs> when you know, swaddling um, can be done very safely. But one point we didn't cover with safety that I should just reiterate is that if you are bed sharing, no swaddling. Okay, if you're using a bedside sleeper, a co-sleeper where your baby has a separate space, you can still swaddle there. Um, something like a snoz pod or an um, arms reach bassinet. Your baby is in a separate bassinet effectively. You can still swaddle there, but if they're in your bed, you must not swaddle because then, um, you know, their arms are restricted and they really could get too hot. Even if intent, even if the swaddle alone is not enough to overheat them, when they're wedged up against you, yeah. that will be too hot. So that's another point that we really make on our website article. Should we talk about rolling and swaddling? Rolling and swaddling, yeah. yeah. It's not really just a summer thing, but no, just, just chuck it in. about safety, yep. I suppose. So, um, that is when swaddling becomes unsafe if your baby can roll. So um, there are either, quite often babies aren't rolling until they're ready to come out of a swaddle anyway, so you can transition them out of a swaddle quite quickly, yep. or you can use a safety sleep. Yep. Um, Love the safety sleep. And sleeve. we were just talking before about whether or not a safety sleep is a layer, and I think yeah. we decided it was similar to a miracle blanket yeah. and should be yeah. counted as a layer, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think I don't know if they're actually toll rated, you know, but yeah, definitely anything that goes across the chest. I think the chest is really where you count your layers, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So um, that's what you're looking at. So anyway, let's talk about summer swaddles now. Um, we're just going to have a quick look at some of our absolute favourites, and then um, you know, in a week or two, we'll do another live on summer swaddling um, when we can see all the swaddles, and then. Mm -hmm. Testing this one. <laughs> <laughs> so good. We've actually, Two it's unbelievable. We've actually got four of our team have either had a baby this year. So um, Maria's had her baby, our production manager who makes all of this on maternity leave, our website guru, SEO expert on maternity leave. I'm not having any more babies. <laughs> Safe to say the babies are <laughs> actually nervous. <laughs> <That's we're> about... <laughs> Yeah, okay, so we've had lots of opportunity to test all the swaddles this year. <laughs> and the one which is for all three, the favourite, has been this one. The MB. Yeah. The MB. Yeah, so you're loving the MB. Yes, and it's such, it's so cute. <laughs> I really like the colours it comes in. <laughs> no problem about the health. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so tell us what you love about the MB. Why do you think it's going to be your pick for summer? Um, I really like it because it's still quite a firm swaddle, because like my favourite is the Miracle Blanket, which is quite a firm arms down swaddle. Yeah, so it gives um, you a Miracle Blanket like... Kind of like a similar oh. feel, but a little bit more movement for babies who like their arms on their chest, um, so because they can just sort of wriggle up in there. Um, I also oh, it's got some serious I love that it's Velcro, so it's really yeah. again really easy to use, um, pretty foolproof, quick to put on. So legs can go in or out. Yeah, 
That's awesome. Yeah, and it's also um, being designed actually by a rocket scientist um, <laughs> with some real safety features too. So like you can actually adjust this um, panel upwards and use the little um, snap them so you get the, the length right. Yeah. Um, or if you want it just, if you like it loose during, you know, kind of getting used to not being swaddled. And then I just love this feature that you yeah, can keep your so baby. Good. You can do a nappy change. Yes. Like I used to try and like pin the arms down <laughs> and change the nappy <laughs> because I hated to be that naked feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you could do your yeah, yeah. yeah. You so can good. do your nappy change, um, or if it's just too warm. So. Yeah, and I think too, you know, when we're talking about layers, if it's really hot and if this is enough for your baby to be settled, mm. you could just actually tuck that down like that. It's still super secure. Yeah. It won't be as secure from a um, stopping, wriggling around point of view, but if you're really concerned about um, baby not getting too hot but you need some mm. swad startle control, then you could just do that. That's what I say with the Miracle Blanket for summer too. Just, just whip off that layer. Yep. extra layer. Yeah. Yeah. So the MB comes in two options. This is the starter version. And there's also um, one that's um, got arms in or out. So I can't remember what that's called. Cool. Cool. Swaddle yeah. out. Okay. So yeah, so in the zero to three months, it's like this. And in the three to six months, when it gets up to the stage Maria was talking about where baby's getting close to rolling, get one arm out and then you can get both out and you can just keep using it like a little mini sleeping bag. Okay, what's our next one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so this is a little unicorn. Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's a muslin from Little Unicorn. A muslin from Little Unicorn. Yeah. I love the muslin. Like, this is the classic. So it's not a fitted swaddle. It's just a um, use your own technique. So, yeah, traditional swaddle. So it means that there's lots of options. You can do whatever you whatever works. Yeah. Um, for summer, you can... Um, uh, we can post some videos afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. Can, we can do some swaddling videos afterwards. Yeah. You can do a legs out version and an arms, um, just with the arms tucked in. And as you can well also just summer. use it, you can just wear it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wearing this one. Uh, great. <laughs> yeah, and actually, some of the prints in these are oh, like, so beautiful. You know, we have staff that just wear these for a scarf. And so buy a print that you love for you, and then later. you can use it later. <laughs> like that. So we'll, I'll come in next time with my dinosaur scarf. On. You're gonna look yeah. <laughs> when you go back to that project management job. You're gonna look so flash with your dinosaur scarf. <laughs> yeah. It's it's sometimes crazy. gifts as well. Like, so yeah, gifts. Such a nice gift because yeah. you know, like it's such beautiful stuff. And yeah. So good. Designed for everyone. Are you going to put Theo into yeah, this we one? Can is put this, Theo on is this why I'm this is lined up here? So I'll just before you just hold me yeah, So this is our sleep store zip swaddle, um, which we designed about. Well, it took a very long time actually. So I think it launched last year. Um, so let's get little Theo into that. Will he still fit? I think so. <laughs> he's only nine weeks. I know oh, he look, he? Yeah, he looks bigger, but I mean he is bigger, but he's only nine weeks. Old. He wore this, this one yesterday. So. The newborn stuff. Is yeah, he's still <laughs> different. Yeah, he's going in yeah. there. Oh, you can pop. See, there you go, longevity. Okay. Yeah. So this is out of our Got Certified Organic Cotton. I need to get that up and out of the way. And this has really been designed to. Um, answer all of those questions about swaddling, <laughs> about it not being too hot, no. not being too tight, having plenty of hip movement. So this is like the super safe swaddle for anyone who's like got an issue with swaddling. Yeah. Um, and and it's arms up, there. Arms up on the chest, most natural position, loads of um, hip room, it's super lightweight, 0.2 tog. Um, and it's got certified organic cotton, which is the highest rating of organic certification um, that you can get. So this is like our dream swaddle. It's what took us a really long time <laughs> to invent it. It's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. And you can also, um, it's got a double-ended zip. So again, for um, heat, you know, it's going to be just as effective on the top half, but you can actually just open it up um, and have the legs out. Or change a nappy. Or change a nappy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's just going to keep lying there modelling that for us. <laughs> and then the other swatter which, um, you know, we've, we've sold for a really long time is the Ergo Pouch um, Swaddle. It used to be called the Cocoon. I think it's just a um, sleep sack swaddle or something now. They keep changing the name. Um, so this one in all sizes can have the arms out. It's a really good option 
um, if you want to buy something and then keep using it as a sleeping bag or if sometimes your baby doesn't need to be swaddled and sometimes they do and it's easy to tuck the arms back in and this is also um, you know organic and really lightweight so that's our kind of top picks for summer and as I say we'll come back to swaddling um, if you you know have more questions or if you want to see other swaddles in our range um, let us know and we'll do another session. Maybe not with you because you'll be busy. <laughs> Maybe with you. That's You're not right. busy. No, I've only got three kids as well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but maternity leave, it's a lovely thing. I love it when Maria has a baby. Have some more babies. And put with that Let's talk to my husband about that. <laughs> Yeah, the four, no, don't go. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, and if you need help choosing a swaddle, um, or if you're not sure what stage you're up to, you can always reach out through um, the sleep groups, and one of the one of the team will help you choose. Um, or our inquiries through the, to the customer service team. You know, they're total swaddling experts in, in our team as well, so there's lots of help available to choose the perfect one. But these are the top picks. Top picks. Okay, so yeah, swaddling safety we've talked about. Sleep. I'm just going to say that lots of people are loving our little model. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we love and them the too. We quite the just, <laughs> we just <laughs> like the live baby to stay this size for a little yeah, bit longer. A little bit longer. Yeah, we um we should put them in the new merino one as well. Mm. Oh, where is that new yellow? Swaddle. Could you get it for us, please, Georgie? It's on next to my desk. Okay. You're going to see an exclusive sneak, sneak peek, peek of Ooh. next winter's new colour. Note that down. Ooh. No, it's, <laughs> it's coming. It's and coming. Then oh, it's when you want to shop and buy stuff because you've got the time, but you don't have the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, don't worry. Just pass oh, that over here. Really yeah. Lovely. So this is our um, new winter colour. It's coming in February. I hope that's going to come in jammies as well. Uh, I believe that my order was already too large and I uh, decided not to make jam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. No, so this is called Dandelion Dash. Oh, that's gorgeous. Aww. And to match back with our denim dash that we had this year. So we'll have next year. Oh, whoops, I ordered too much. I really did because I couldn't quit with the denim because we love the denim. So there'll be matchy two for next year. Oh. Um, so this will be coming in sleeping bags and in the swaddle. It's, it's the same style as this, but in the merino. So we do have this in our current three colours. So this is the same lightweight, um, double-ended zip and everything, um, but just a little bit warmer being merino, but it is still pretty light. It will be a really good option for night time okay. at the moment mm. because it will, you know, cover the kind of ups and downs of the temperature. Yeah. And did you say Feb? Feb for yeah. the yellow. So um, the, so yeah, the blue, the grey stripe, and the mint green dot is available now. Okay, so now my list says that I've talked, I've talked too much. Um, let's talk about summer sleeping bags now, ladies. Okay. So uh, let's talk about TOG. What does TOG mean? Should customers, you know, be worried about the TOG? What about wool babes? They're not TOG rated, so let's talk about all of that. So how would you describe TOG? I don't, I'm not very good with TOG. Not good with TOG? <laughs> Do you have any idea about TOG? Well, I think, I think TOG is just like basically a weight rating. Yeah. It's yeah. like how warm it is. How warm it is. Yeah. TOG is how warm it yeah. is. There you go. Okay, I was, <laughs> it's not a trick question. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not a trick question. Hopefully some of my people can relate online yeah. to me not so knowing. So basically the lower the number, the smaller the number, the cooler it is. So 0.2 TOG, 0.2 TOG. Thin. Um, this is probably like a 0.5 weight t-shirt, so mm -hmm. thinner than, you know, like a thin t-shirt. Yep, yep. And then if you get up to like 3.5 tog, that's like a fat winter a sleeping duvet. bag. <laughs> a duvet, yeah. yeah, exactly. And some duvets are actually rated by tog rather than grams, but um, so 3.5, 2.5 are like your winter weight, one tog's like your kind of mid weight, 0.2 to 0.5's like your summer weight. Um, so that's as a rule of thumb, it kind of relates to like if you imagine a blanket, so one tog, one blanket, as a rule of thumb, yeah. without getting into like a blanket might be thicker or thinner, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Keeping it simple. <laughs> Keeping For it me. simple, <laughs> yeah. So a tog is a measure of warmth um, and thermal resistance, to be more technical. Go for the lowest number you can find if you want it cooler, go mm. for a war higher number if you want it warmer. So then yes, wool babes are not TOG rated and the reason that um, wool babes and all of our merino products are not TOG rated is that merino doesn't work like 
that. <laughs> so merino covers a much wider temperature range and that can happen because of the way that the merino content regulates temperature and you can just adjust the amount of clothing mm -hmm. um, and you can use something like our three seasons wool babes you can use those from about 18 degrees to about 30 degree room temperature and there's no cotton bag that you can do that with mm -hmm. um, and nothing with polyester would you want to use over about 20 degrees so um, so the tog rating gives like quite a small narrow band that a product is suitable for whereas the wool babes have all really generous ranges because of the merino content but as a kind of a, a rough comparison like if we say that a lightweight bag would be um, like a sleep store organic 0.2 tog um, so this is a sort of a 0.2 then a summer wool babe would be sort of about a 0.5 it's slightly thicker fabric and it's got the merino content but you can still use the um, the summer wool babe you know, I've, I've personally used this up to in, in nursery that was 33 degrees. Um, used it in Fiji, you know, when yeah, my littlest was little. Well. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the original really sample good. was tested in Fiji. Yeah. So when people say, is it suitable for Fiji? I said, it was designed yeah. for Fiji. <laughs> it went to Fiji. Tropical. Yeah, but you, this would also be good for Fiji. So yeah, so the TOG rating, it's hard to kind of compare exactly, um, but you know, some lightest weight, 0.2 to 0.5, and there's really very little difference. Customers can get really like anxious about, but I've got to have the lowest, so I have to have 0.2, but you know, in terms of if you actually felt the fabric of a 0.5 mm. versus a 0.2, you wouldn't really notice the difference. And the same if you kind of between... 0.5 and 1, you're generally looking at one layer versus two layers. Something else about sleeping bags is we often get people abandoning using sleeping bags it's the minute it starts to get yeah. hot. Yeah. And why, what would be your tip about, why do you think we should carry on using sleeping bags through like, the winter, I mean the summer? <laughs> sleeping bags become like a sleep association for your baby. So as soon as you uh, put the bag on the bed and you put the baby in the sleeping bag, then it, you're telling them that it's bedtime. It's like when we go and like before bed I brush my teeth and I go to the bathroom and I get into bed, that's my routine to get to sleep and my yep. brain knows that it's time for sleep. Yes. So it's the same, it's that sleep association, it's turning on the white noise, putting a baby in a sleeping bag, giving them a cuddle, singing a song, whatever it yep. might be, and then getting them prepared for sleep. So yep. breaking that just because it's hot doesn't make sense. Like it's an <laughs> <No>. excellent <laughs> <sleep association>. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and so when you are on holiday, you know, if you go to grandma's or if you go to a mm. motel or you're in the travel cot, that association you definitely want those cues and those kind yeah, of you carry that through your yeah, summer holidays anywhere, yeah. wherever and that'll make your summer holiday sleep um, go a little bit easier don't guarantee it will go smoothly because trip babies are sometimes sometimes allergic to travel cots <laughs> <laughs> we always get that how can I make my baby sleep in a travel cot I don't know I'm not there <laughs> anyway so yeah so the sleep association is really important you might not need the sleeping bag for the warmth when it's really hot so that's why you just choose the lightest possible one but then come around March April you're going to curse really loudly we'll hear you from your house shouting um, when you go to put your child back in their winter weight sleeping bag and they forgot what a sleeping bag's yeah. for. Yeah. We get that every every kind of autumn yeah. where people will say, oh, I stopped using a sleeping bag and now my particularly toddlers won't go back into it. So our advice is if you want to keep using it next year when it's cold and you need the bedding, stick with a sleeping bag all through the summer and just get the lightest one. Um, this might be a good time to show you my sloth. <laughs> so cute. So cute. It's like a super lightweight one, so it's just like the equivalent of a sheet over your child. And then it'll mean that the transition back to a warmer bag will go smoothly rather than like a toddler protest mm -hmm. from hell. It also means you're not you know they're not getting too cold at night if they are, especially if they're sweating a little bit. Yeah. Because it is really warm. You can just pop them in a singlet and a nappy or just a nappy. Well no, that's in a suit. Time sleep. Wrong one. <laughs> And you know, and then it is like Andrea was saying before, it just whipped away, and it's they're still kept warm when it yeah. does either cool down or they have yeah. sweated a bit yeah, as a breeze. Right. And yeah, also, you but don't even have a summer night, it's still going to get colder. Yeah, at like three, and I still like a sheet yeah. like over yeah. me, you know, yeah. so I'm sure it's still comfortable for them. Yeah, to have a little summer, yeah, it means yeah. you're not putting unsafe things in the cot like sheets and blankets and things 
that is very true. So um, yeah, that's the summer wool babe, and then this is a little suit as well. So if you haven't, um, you know, if your child is climbing out of the cot, um, or if you feel like they're starting to get more mobile, um, and that's kind of thing, oh, I must ditch a sleeping bag. Now you could actually swap to a lighter weight suit rather than, you know, buy another bag if it's coming up. Well. Oh, show off the really, I know that's a bag. This, this one. Suit? Yeah, so cute. <laughs> Too cute. <laughs> So these are both more mid-weight. This is um, rated a one tog, but because it's muslin, it's pretty light. Um, so it's two layers of muslin, and then this is two layers of merino cotton. So these are perfect for this time of the year, but I reckon even right through summer, they yeah, would be just yeah. adorable at night. Plus it's Insta-friendly. <laughs> as long as you don't put a hat on with it, yeah, yeah, I will come exactly. after you. <laughs> Like a hashtag, hashtag not safe. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag no hashtag ban the hat. Yeah. Whoops, might get in trouble for that. Okay, I've got one of these in my wardrobe and I keep oh, putting it next to him. No, it's not. Yeah. 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 I'm going to show you somewhere the prints if yeah. you haven't seen them. It's Wales. This is actually the most popular. We first designed this. It was going to be navy blue. We thought, you know, Wales, navy blue. And then it came out this really amazing charcoal. And I'm like, oh, love the charcoal. It's gorgeous. Sometimes you do get some random things from the organic factory in India. But normally it all turns out good. You saw the sloths. This one we just adore. That's it's so pretty without being like pinky girl. Pink? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah. really sort of gorgeous apricotty peach colour. This was um, a print from a, a famous designer in London actually who specialises in beautiful children's stationery and, mm -hmm. and linen and so on. And we contacted her and said, Oh, please, can we use your print? Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's That's gorgeous. Really, eh? it's gorgeous. I love the paint. And then, um, have you all seen our new Elements collection? I'm just going to show you these really? off as well. You can hold up a couple. So this is our um, our ongoing range now. So you'll be able to get mixing and matching, and you can see the the summer sleepwear. Um, and then there's bedding right up to big kids. I think like even my 16 year old would probably dig a bit of this on his yeah. bed in a in a duvet cover or a fitted sheet. So it's designed so that it'll just match back with whatever else you've got. And there's a bit of crossover in the colours between the wool babes and the sleep store because they're all designed here and we've only got so much, so many ideas. <laughs> and wanting to make it on trend, but you know, they are quite different fabric. Um, what else? We've done, the, oh so let's just talk about some general things about kind of bedtime and that we get the question all the time about it's warm in the evening but still chilly. Mm -hmm. Um, in the night. So what are your tips at the moment with your little ones of how to kind of cool the bedroom down but then not freeze, not like cook your child at bedtime or freeze them in the middle of the night. It's a bit of a like 60 million dollar question. Yeah. We could get rich if we find the answer mm -hmm. to that. Well in terms of like layering yep. I always say um, layer for the coldest part of the night so um, you, you can cool the room down it's much easier to cool it than to heat it especially at this time of year yeah um, so I would put on the appropriate PJs and um, a sleeping bag for you know basically you're thinking like 3 to 4 a.m. is going to be the yep. coolest time of the night yeah um, and it does the temperature does drop quite significantly and that's often when you get babies that awake yeah um, and then won't go back to sleep because yep. they're um, awake <laughs> <laughs> well, they're cold and yeah. it's hard to resettle you know for yourself as a, as a grown-up if you wake yeah. up freezing you get up I would get up and put socks on and then I'm probably like I'm up now I might as well go to the loo yeah. and then you're like you lose all the tired <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, that's know. what happens with babies that wake up yeah. cold yes. they're like yeah yeah so dress for the coolest part of the night and yep. then cool the room down yeah so like you're gonna need I mean it's hot at the moment like in Auckland you're yeah. going to need a fan or um, to open the window or something in the evening time just to cool, cool the room down so that your baby can sleep comfortably because it's like really hard thing. to get. Like this fan here, yeah, this is our new favourite. I'm going home with my list. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, you know, maybe I think too. So good. About 80% yeah. of the staff have purchased one of these since not be we any started yeah. stocking them. <laughs> Give it a try. Well, they are selling so quick. We did get. Um, a container and about a quarter of them have sold already and like we've only had about two really so hot November, days yeah. so, so, and they are from Crane which is um, you know we've sold Crane humidifiers um, for a long time mm, they're very high excellent. quality and the feedback um, I think we had the first publisher review on the website 
for the fan and it was amazing. The lady said it was so good she wished she bought two. Oh. So just buy two. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll put, oh, yeah, a, might be maybe a, we'll put a deal for buying two. <laughs> <laughs> like that. So just that, um, have you got any other tips for cooling the room down? Is that what you'd do as it well? Cool it, do. Try to cool it down at bedtime. Yeah. Dress for the, the yeah. cooler And when part. it gets really hot you can do things like um, put a cold bottle of water or an ice bottle of water in front of a fan. Because some of us, especially I know in my house that had double glazing, it got really, really hot. Yeah. Um, so you can do things like that to cool it down. Um, uh, also blackout blinds, t sometimes if you have a north facing room it will heat the room up too much during the day so you might want to take them down for the daytime and put them up again at night because getting light in the mornings it's still really really good for doing I couldn't awake. believe this yeah. morning it was light at 5.30 I was yeah. like awake going why am I awake? My children were awake. Yeah. <laughs> so were mine. So were mine. <laughs> you need yeah. the blackout yeah. blinds. <laughs> Someone just asked if he's asleep. Oh yeah, yes. he's asleep. <laughs> he really likes this model. Yeah, <laughs> you too could have the sleeping baby. <laughs> you just need ladies going. White noise, pretty right? magic. Yeah. yeah, white noise, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I think you can also, um, you know, you could use a humidifier to circulate a little bit of cool air. Um, you know, with your fan, so you're circulating. This actually circulates the air as well as just blowing it out. Um, so you could try that if you've got a humidifier, whack it on by the fan or just whack it on next to the cot. It's not going to do any harm and you yeah. might find that a little bit of just very light moisture can help. Yeah. Um, the same, it works the same as if you just actually like sponge your child's face <laughs> a little bit, you know, cool cloth um, just to settle them down. <laughs> Um, our wool babe slip suit, PJ suit, which is hanging up there. Marie, can you just grab that front, that green one? That's a really good option for this time of the year because it's light, but it's got 30% yes. merino in it. So a really good, um, still get the all-in-one cover um, without it being too thick and compared to something that's got polyester in it, like a yeah. wonder suit, a lot of those have got polyester in them. Um, this will just give you more temperature regulation. So it goes My girls the are going. Thing, eh? Yeah, they're going between that and the um, sleep store merino, depending on the evening, yeah. like this one in the yeah. in the sleep suit. Yeah. Um, just with just that, and uh, it's perfect. My, my two littlest are still often wearing their um, <laughs> merino fleece ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting a bit warm, but they love the feeling oh. of it so much. And then when we go camping, they'll totally take them camping. Mine were the other day. Like, I put it on the on the group the other day because we had those few hot days in Auckland and then it dropped back yep. again yeah. and I when I put them away stupidly <laughs> when yeah, got them out the again and that's quite. what I put them back in because yeah. it does get still quite cool in the mornings and I had a couple of 4 a.m. wake ups and I don't know. No, no, no. we won't be having that <laughs> and that's our um, new organic cotton um, little zip suit which is adorable so you can wear that um, you know like you could, you could buy the lightest um, weight of the sleeping bag and this mm. and then you know come the middle of summer you probably just need a bodysuit or just the nappy um, but for now rather than buy a mid-weight bag you could buy a suit and a bag and then you'd be really well covered and then you can just wear that during the day because who needs to change to like cute. daytime and nighttime yeah. just wear it all day yeah. I've always got time for that <laughs> yeah. I know actually the other day my, uh, my littlest went to bed he just goes in his shorts and his t-shirt sometimes I'm like are you changing for bed and he's like no the only difference is the prints are <laughs> sure enough. Enough. I know, this is still like shorts and pants if he's not in the onesie. Okay, so I think that's um, everything that we had on our agenda. I think so. Up far and wide, all the topics. And as I say, we will do um, all the summer swaddles in detail and we'll have a more comprehensive look at our um, sleeping bag um, selection. But are there any questions you'd like us to cover yes, now? I think I've missed my meeting, so we must be talking. <laughs> So we've got lots of questions actually, so okay. um, I've tried to kind of, I think one of the main questions was how do you deal with the fluctuating temperatures, I think we've kind of addressed that already. Yeah, one thing I'll just add to that though is that, you know, our advice is to, to cool the room and um, dress for the coldest part of the night but I do just want to remind you all that you have to use your judgement mm -hmm. you know if your room is 30 degrees and it gets down to 15 degrees then you can't dress a child in 30 yeah. degrees yeah. for 15 yeah. degrees because that's like winter weight you know that's like a duvet weight wool babe three layers of clothes yeah. and then you really are risking overheating so you yeah. do really need to use your common sense and your judgment and look for the red and sweaty and the signs of overheating that we talked about. Um, if it's not practical in your house to, you know, get the room comfortable, then you're going to have to dress for 
hot <laughs> and when your child wakes up in the night put another layer on them or before you go to bed um, you know put them to bed in a light sleeping bag and then put another sleeping bag over the top rather than try and take one off and yeah. so on so you know common sense always prevails and checking your baby is always important um, but if, if it's not like super hot then yeah fan on window open have them in something that's got a bit of temperature regulation for the night. Yeah. Lots of us are still up for a feed anyway, so that's when we <laughs> whack change another layer over. On. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, particularly if you know if your baby's getting up at 10 or 11 for a feed, they're going to be generally awake at that point. You could actually swap the sleeping bag to yeah. something warmer, then do the feed, get them nice and drowsy and then pop them, them back, back yeah, rather than, than, you know, whichever order that you prefer. They might be howling too much, you might not want to muck around with this. <laughs> Just do it really quick. <laughs> yeah. That's why the like, double bagging can work quite well actually, yeah. put another one over the top. That's a good tip, actually. That's a very good tip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There yeah. Go. there's no reason not to do it. Like you would use two blankets, so yeah. two sleeping yeah. bags. Um, particularly if they're like the same brand, they're gonna just fit together nicely. So the wool babes in our sleep store, um, they're made to the same um, size. They're the same shape and they've got the same zip in that. So you can just go like a light one point two tog for bedtime, and then pull your three seasons over the top. Um, perfect. perfect. So it's just effectively like another layer of lining. Okay, what's next? And it segues quite nicely into someone said, can a cool breeze um, by opening the window or turning the fan on help babies sleep better? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yep. Definitely go with that. You know, and the other thing with the fans too is a lot of fans have a nice white noise. Yeah. Yeah. This one's a bit too quiet actually. Yeah, like, this is not used to the, um, the hush or the roam. Yeah, you yeah, can like that. layer up your white noise. Yeah, yeah I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no breeze, like gentle breeze um, is so nice. It's so nice on your nice skin, and relaxing, it's just yeah. calming. And these ones are good because it's not like in your face, it's not blowing directly, it's yeah. you know oscillating, moving around. So. He is enjoying it. So, <laughs> yeah, must be good. We're, we're enjoying all enjoying it. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, someone said best um, for a toddler who's recently in a big bed for summer sleep, bag or suit? Hmm. What do you reckon? Who's got toddler still? Me. It's still in her bag? Or? Yeah, she's in the bag. Well, she's refusing the bag because it's a duvet. It's too, too, too hot. hot. Um, but I think I will be getting her a, a lighter one because yeah. she definitely still needs it for the cooler part of the night. She's waking up. So yeah. um, I would I would say the suit. Just Go move yeah, into the suit. suit. What did you say? Move into I the think suit. it depends on your on the kid, and yeah. I think you'll know. Um, uh, the suits are pretty cute, and I guess it means they can get up and down. And yeah. A little bit easier once they get to sort of that almost toddler preschool y type age, yeah. but you still, yeah. still, because kids are terrible at keeping blankets on and they yeah. won't keep them on until they're like five or six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go in and yeah. check on them and the blankets are around their feet and it's just, you know, it's almost a waste of time having a cute duvet on your bed. But, yeah. um, so that's where it's good to have a, a suit, especially when they get a bit bigger and maybe they're getting out to go to the toilet or yeah. you're toileting them before bed yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so I think it just depends. You'll know when that. It's sort of a natural yeah. I think if your child's around. sleeping well in a bed, in a sleeping bag, um, you know, and then they're taking it off before they get up, or like one of my kids didn't even know you could get out of bed, he just would sit yes. in the sleeping bag. <laughs> that it is was like quite two a and thing. a half. Yeah. And then it was like, go and unzip it and be like, <gasps> and then you'd get up. So, like, why would you mess with that yeah, by letting them have their it, yeah. See, that's why we had to change because um, my two and a half year old was walking in the sleeping bag and yeah. I was like no, okay, I, no. I'm not ruining that no. No. <laughs> yeah so I think if they are walking around in the sleeping bag that's a tripping hazard or if they're trying to climb out of a cot mm. in a bag that's a fall hazard that's a brain injury hazard mm. so we don't want that so if you've got safety issues definitely swap to a suit mm -hmm. um, if you're kind of anticipating you're going to be um, swap if you think a suit is a better option um, then you know we've got some good options options available yeah. now these are both quite new to our range um, but this particularly the wool babe suit that we designed ourselves it was for that scenario that people wanted to keep using wool babe mm. they loved all the benefits they loved the sleep association but they were worried about the falling out of the cot or the dropping over mm. and people walking around the house in a sleeping bag just like makes Ooh. me go oh it's cringy yeah, yeah it is dangerous <laughs> so yeah so the, this is a three seasons weight we also have um, duvet weight and that's a one tog. So this is the lightest one. I think we do also have a grow one, which is, is when we're talking about the sleeping suit. There's a few people asking about what about their feet? If they get cold, oh, yes. Yeah, is so there like what do you recommend there? So with our wool babe ones, um, we made them with a really long cuff, and they're very generous in size anyway. So they're designed so that 
um, you can use them with the cuffs rolled up or you can pull it down over your feet like it's not a specific sock because we wanted to make them flexible so you know you'll, you can probably get two years use if you use it with that as the feet or you yeah. use it scrunched up and then by the time that like that's full length so buy it um buy it a generous size if you want to pull that down over the feet but they're not um, too generous because they're good sizes they're already yeah, quite yeah. generous yeah you can also um you know lamingtons or icebreaker mm. merino yeah. socks go really well with a suit as well but in summer you wouldn't generally wouldn't be covering worry feet about anyway it. but in winter we would I'd often be talking about lamingtons because yeah. we get yeah. lots of early waking and cold, yeah. cold questions yeah. anyway. So if you, if you are taking, if you're going camping in particular, I would say one of our duvet suits or one of our duvet bags, even if it's the middle of summer, night time in a tent is still pretty cold. Yeah. So yeah, definitely it's a good time to stock up on, on duvet bags and yeah, socks. I always would take wool socks camping right through through the year I can think of camping at like by the Bay of Islands with five layers of clothes the duvet and socks on myself <laughs> so, just need a cold wind really and the tent goes yeah what might literally fall over I did have that happen one year that was a flood not a wind <laughs> yeah, anyway um, next question is still um, this lady still heating baby's room um, to around 18 to 19 degrees but when should she stop heating the room is it okay as it's starting to get cold? So when do you make the call to stop actually using a heater because the temperature is dropping? And I would probably just stop using the heater now. Personally, I don't really use heaters. I try to avoid using heaters because I'd rather dress my kids in like warmer merino. Mm. So I would say swap, drop the heating now and just use a slightly warmer bag or add a merino bodysuit. We've actually got, because we're getting a whole new shipment of merino shortly, um, most of our merino is half price. So if you haven't got any, now's a good time. I think the 100% merino bodysuits are like $20. So yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty and the pyjamas in the smaller sizes, because mostly our pyjamas sell in the bigger sizes. So I just layer up an extra layer of merino drop the heater and the duvet weight would be perfect. Yeah. If the house is cold enough to still be needing heating, I'd swap it out for a warm bag, then you'll be good for next winter and you probably will need the heater a lot less with a duvet weight bag. Great. Uh, someone's asked what top point would a bamboo swaddle be? Mm, depends which bamboo swaddle. <laughs> probably like, like if it's light, like a point maybe similar to the um is it like, does it say if it's a zip swaddle or, or like a... Just, just mention the bamboo. Yeah, so if it's something like, I'm just trying to think who uses bamboo. Love to dream. Love to dream. Love to dream. dream. Yeah. Right, so the love to dream ones are all tog rated or they're like a light. So I think the light one is about a 0.2 to 0.5. It's somewhere around there. And then their original weight are one tog. I think the newer ones have all got the tog rating on them. So it'll be around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 if it's a love to dream bamboo. And if it's just a square swaddle like this out of a bamboo, it's going to be, most people would use about 160 to 180 grams. This is 170 grams if you're familiar with our sleep store fabric. So because it's just a square, it's not tog rated, it's really going to depend how many times around you go. It would be like if you just had one layer of that, that's what our point two tog bags are. But each time you go around and the snugger um, you're using it, it's going to be warmer. So if you are using a wrap like that and wrapping it around a couple of times, I'd say that's probably equivalent to a one tog at least because of the layers and how snug you would have it. Great. Thank you. Any more? Another question? Yes. <laughs> um, in the clothing, guys, specifically for Love to Dream, but I've had this question with our wool made ones before, yep. are the example guides from merino or cotton? So when in the... Yeah. yeah so if it's used to put them in a bodysuit, should that be a merino or a cotton one? And if cotton, and we use merino instead, how much would that increase the temperature inside a spot? I would say that the clothing guide was not written for one or the other. Mm. It's an average. You know, within a cotton, within cotton, there's, you know, if you had something that was like really thick cotton, mm. you could have really thin merino. It's just like a you guide. You can have cotton that's much thicker than this. Yeah, you can have like example. sweatshirt wet cotton. So I think it's a guide. And I, I wouldn't worry too much, you know, particularly if you're using wool babe um, sleeping bags. Yeah. They're very forgiving. They cover such a wide range. Don't, don't try not to get kind of 
um, caught up in worrying about is it a this, is it a that, is it thick, is it thin. It's just a guide and always with how many layers of clothing, your own judgement and your own baby yeah. is the best rule of thumb. So start with, like if it says a bodysuit and a, and a you know, full layer, if you've got a merino bodysuit, I'd always use merino bodysuit as my first choice. Um, even in summer, because of the temperature regulation, just choose a lightish one. Um, so something like a, like a merino singlet suit and a cotton zip suit. Or you could go, you know, cotton bodysuit, wool babe, onesie. Just try not to worry, just, you know, pick a couple of layers. Check your baby, yeah. it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. And people shouldn't be afraid of merino in summer because it is a naturally breathable fabric. Yeah, it's not that much hotter than a cotton, and it no. allows that temperature regulation to happen naturally. So absolutely, really good fabric for summer. Yeah, particularly, um, you know, and probably counter to what most people would think, if your baby feels the heat and gets sweaty, you're far Marino's better off in merino, yeah, yeah. because then when they do cool down, the merino stays really comfortable, even if it's damp, whereas cotton um, or bamboo get cold and clammy, and then your sweaty baby will end up a cold baby, and you will end up in a wake mum. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, the, the, the merino, the I think we're quite low on our merino singlet suits, so I'd snap them up on special too, but that would be my first choice yeah. for babies for right through the year. And myself, I'm not a baby clearly, but <laughs> I always sleep in an icebreaker singlet all year round, yeah. and I just change what layer, do, what warm duvet I have, and whether the windows open or close, but that kind of like merino base layer will see you yeah. all through the year so good. for us as well. Okay, any more? Um, Someone's just, there's a couple of questions around swaddling. Um, can you keep babies swaddled as long as they're not rolling? Like how old, that yep, kind of a yep. question. But yeah, when can you stop yep. swaddling? When should yep. you stop swaddling? You can definitely keep swaddling baby until they roll. And even if they are rolling, but they're quite little. Um, so some babies roll really early, you know, 10, 12 weeks, but they're still generally not ready to not be swaddled. So you could just use a safety sleep like we talked about earlier. Um, otherwise, as a general guide, most babies are starting to be ready for no swaddle or to transition around around four to five months some babies a little bit later um, uh, and yeah but if they're swaddled but rolling safety sleep you'll be fine yeah yeah and you'll read different you know different countries different experts will say different things on what age like I know in America the um, American Academy of Pediatrics now says no swaddling after eight weeks but that's based on that like one baby one time rolled when they were eight weeks yeah. and so they've now made this blanket recommendation you must stop swaddling at eight weeks because it's dangerous but it's only dangerous if they've rolled over and they're face down yeah. because that does have seven times the SIDS risk of swaddled on their back so again it's a guideline use your judgment watch your baby if they're getting close to rolling swap to something um, like this with with one arm out and then as soon as you see actual any sign of rolling onto their tummy then you've got to get both arms okay. out yeah. yeah or the yeah. safety sleep yeah. so if you look at Theo here you know if, if he was getting close to rolling you can get a, a safety sleep right around this middle part and still have the arms swaddled or if you're doing arms down swaddling and you velcro your baby <laughs> around the swaddle that just gives you that little bit of time to um, deal with the startle Yes. wearing off yes. sufficiently and that yeah. 8 to 12 week period is when babies do tend to like they might have been doing a good long sleep in the night and then they start to wake more frequently yes. and they actually need more sleep tools like yep. a swaddle and a yep. white knot you know all those kind of things that we can introduce to yeah. really help at that yeah, time so definitely. if your yeah. 10 week old starts waking up it's totally normal it does not yeah. mean get rid of the swaddle you know, heat the swaddle, <laughs> the swaddle. The swaddle. <laughs> add more swaddle yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we often say have you tried a miracle, miracle blanket, blanket. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's a little bit like baby wearing, that there's lots of rules, but we really try to help you use your judgment and build your confidence as a parent to understand why there are rules. And, you know, does it apply? Is it relevant? Why, why did someone come up with that, you know, guideline of eight weeks? Because of, you know, a baby who one time rolled or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's not your baby and you're there showing no signs of rolling, why would you like lose your best tool yeah. to get them to sleep for a better stretch? Like well, this? I wouldn't. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this baby is nine, did you say nine weeks? He will be nine weeks on Sunday. Yeah, yeah would you gosh. stop swaddling that baby after you've witnessed this <laughs> miraculous <laughs> napping? <laughs> I would not either. No. I don't think Maria would. No, either. no, no, no. Okay, cool. Any others? Uh, 
just having a look at my list. Uh, oh, someone said that they're in an angel sleep sack. I think that's like yeah, it. Yeah, arms up like maybe oh, like yeah. love to dream or something. Yeah. And when would be, what would be a good time to transition or a good sleep sack to transition into from that? Okay, so the love to dream, if it's a love to dream, they do have the transition or 50-50, they keep changing the name as well as what the togs yeah. are called. Um, the transition love to dreams, you can swap to any time from about three months because the, they start from medium, which I think is about six kilos. So any time from that, you can start doing the, basically the same as this, one arm out, one arm swaddled, although it would be swaddled up here. Um, if you, and you could just keep using that as a sleeping bag with the wings zipped off. But otherwise, um, you know, our sleep stool bags and our wool bag bags go from three to 24 months. So any time from that three months, you can move into a bag. Mm -hmm. And a lot of babies, I think when we did a survey, 25% of our customers' babies are not swaddled or were never swaddled. So we do have sleeping bags that go smaller um, from newborn, or you can use something like this, but just even though it can be used as a swaddle, you can just use arms out. Thank you all for watching. This did take a little bit longer uh, than we intended, but I decided my other meeting was boring and I'd rather talk to you guys and these lovely ladies. Thank you both for coming in into our special um, celebrity baby guest video. <laughs> so goodbye from us and Bye. have a lovely weekend.